What's up YouTube? Today, I got another cast aluminum repair. What we have here is some sort of piece off of a post pounder. I think this is where the handles go. I'm not 100% sure, but you can see what happened there. They snapped it off. When you're dealing with cast aluminum, really any cast aluminum, it's a very dirty metal, meaning you need a host of tools to clean it. I like to use acetone to start off just to degrease it because it doesn't leave a residue. Um, paper towels to wipe the acetone on and off. And then I'll move over to a stainless wire wheel and I'll just hit the inside of the area, get any sort of oxidization that's built up from this thing being cracked or any sort of grease or whatever that got stuck in there that the acetone couldn't get because this is a porous area. Then you're gonna need your specialty aluminum grinding discs and cutoff wheels. These are specifically made for aluminum. I like using them, less of a chance of contaminants. And then I'll be using some Rock Mount Neptune TIG in 332nd. I like this stuff, it's specialty made for repairs. And I have some flame hold here. Because this is an awkward spot, I'm gonna need a way to hold it. You know, it doesn't sit flush on the table. There's no way for me to clamp it. So we're gonna figure out how to use this. I might just put a little bit of, a little ball underneath this spot here to kind of hold it up and into place while I tack it. That's basically all the tools that I'm gonna have here on the table today to try to do this repair successfully. The stainless wire wheel I use is only used on aluminum and nothing else. I like to use one of these uh, N95 filters from 3M. I heard in the comments that this is the wrong filter, but when I called 3M, this is what their representatives pointed me towards. If you'd like to buy any of these tools that I listed off, the links are in the description below. Now that we've got it all prepped out, our alignment still looks pretty good. Sometimes when you do that, you lose your alignment, which can be kind of a pain in the ass. But luckily we didn't lose it this time around. So this stuff is basically like welding silly putty or Play-Doh. And I like to wear gloves when I work with this stuff because it does kind of get in the pores of your skin a little. And like I said, I'm just gonna make a ball. Just stick it into the piece itself. And you can see it sticks nice and easy. It's part of the advantage of this stuff. And then, so it's gonna need to come down. So you can see it's just, it, it sticks. And that's the main thing is like, how do you get these awkward pieces to stay in, in space, in a place that you need them? And you can see how quick that was to jig up. If I had to jig that any other way, it, it would take me a minute. We're gonna go ahead and get our TIG torch set up. I like to use a rare earth tungsten, which is coated by a purple band. Um, these are very versatile, they're non-radioactive, you can use them on steel, aluminum. I really only suggest this on an inverter style TIG. If you have a transformer style TIG, I would suggest green tungsten. Very easy, this is a WP-17 uh, TIG torch. We have our coilet, we have our glass lens here. I like the glass because you can see through it, it, makes it a little easier to see while you're welding. Sticking it through this end, screwing that in, Got a rubber boot here that just seals it. And I'm gonna have about a quarter inch stick out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my TIG, a TIG torch cap on there. Making sure uh, while I'm doing this, I'm observing that none of the O-rings are blown out because you're just gonna be wasting argon. And these bottles are about $170, especially if you're uh, buying it from those thieves at General Distributing. Now we're gonna take a rag with acetone once more and we're gonna clean our welding rods off. Let me show you that real quick. Another thing that I like to do is I'm gonna nip these in the middle to make them shorter. And the reason is, well, it's two reasons. I wanna start from the middle when I weld because on the tip of every welding rod, I've noticed there's some sort of bluing. I'm gonna score them and then break them. All right. I'm not really sure why you have to wear rubber gloves when you use acetone because I, I watch my wife basically take a bath in this shit every time she does her nails. And I'm sure many of your wives will be doing the same. And I'm just going to give them the once over once again.
You've got it all tacked up, but you see that black stuff that's floating up to the surface? That's just the stuff in the casting. If I was welding regular aluminum, brand new aluminum, I would be concerned to see that. I'd be like, okay, well, we got an issue somewhere. But when you're welding a casting, you're going to get this peppering in there. We're going to wire wheel that out, and we're going to wire wheel in between each pass. Okay, now we're getting a nice solid weld. Now that looks really good for cast. Now that it's got a nice solid weld on it, I'm gonna take my flame hold. I'm gonna take it over my sink. Just add a little touch of water to it and mold it back up. See what happens is the water gets sucked out of it when you uh, put that much heat into it. But this stuff is infinitely reusable if you just add a little water. And right back into our bin it goes. Don't know if you guys caught it, but when I upped my amperage, what I forgot to do was up my post flow. And that's something important you need to remember because your tungsten is gonna stay hotter longer. And the, the purpose of post flow, um, when you're using, well, when you're welding aluminum, the main purpose of post flow is to shield that tungsten while it's red hot. My fucking wrist is doing this because I'm right on my nerve. There, hit the final pause. Now that we've completely welded this out, I'm going to take a ball peen hammer and I'm going to do what's called peening. And this will give us a better chance of our, our weld succeeding. Hey guys, there it is. Our cast aluminum repair is all complete. Let's flip it over so you guys can see it. It's welded all the way through, 100% penetration, and it should last, well, until it breaks again. Well guys, that's the end of the repair. My name is Melton Metal Anthony. If you like what you saw here today, like, subscribe, share. If you've seen any products you wanna buy, like the flame hole, like the TIG rod, like the gloves, like the wire wheel, any of that stuff that helps support me, helps me make these videos. Recently, Rock Mount's been the real reason I've been able to make these videos for you. These guys have been great to me and they make great products. So if you like me, you like them, go ahead, support them too. And if you really like the video and you want to support your boy, go ahead, head over to meltonmetal.com, buy yourself a hat, a t-shirt, a sticker, do what you can. Anyway, if you didn't like the video, remember to go fuck yourself. All right, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.